Yo, what up guys? What up? What up? In this video, guys, I'm going to be walking you through on how to call a procedure in Redshift via Lambda. So in Lambda, we're going to end up calling the uh, Redshift procedure to pretty much execute it, right? So this, this will be ideal for execution of procedures. So, but guys, but, 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 before we get started, man, you can give me a follow, guys. You can give me a like, man. I appreciate it. Give me a follow on Twitch as well, guys. And uh, let's get started. So the first thing, guys, that I want to kind of just discuss real quick is we're going to be using the uh, Boto 3, right? So keep in mind, Lambda comes with that package already included. So this is the package that's included in Lambda. And we're using the Redshift Data API service. So this is very key, guys. Like, um, I actually, I don't know why, man. I have used Boto many times to do other stuff. I never use their data API service and it's actually pretty cool, man. I like it a lot. So either way, we're going to be using it. And this ultimately gives us the ability again to query, um, a table, run a query for the database, or in our case call procedure, right? So we have many options of what we, what we could do. So this is very cool guys. This, this it really is, uh, especially because we're going to use in Lambda and in Lambda, you could have parameters that you can pass in through your URL. You can easily add those parameters in your SQL statement of what you're trying to query or in your procedure. Like in my case, I'm running a procedure. So dude, there, there, there's, you get very creative. You do all kinds of things, all kinds of things. So just wanted to kind of touch bases on what, what we're using the Redshift data API service. And of course it's Redshift hyphen data. So let's go ahead and build that out. So I do have a, a, um, uh, Lambda project. Again, it's a blank project. This is how it looks when you create a new project. So when you create a new project in uh, AWS Lambda, um, of course, we need to go ahead and import in the um, Boto 3 package, right? Because again, we need to call the Redshift service API. So we need to bring that in and then ultimately this will be your client. So go ahead and just copy this over as well. So now under the to do piece, we are going to do something. And again, in our case, we're going to be calling a Redshift procedure. There's no need along with your Redshift is all part of the same part of your same network. And uh, I believe you would need permissions. So what your, your role that's running Lambda will need permissions as well to for redshift so just that's something to keep in mind your im row so just kind of you know keep that in mind uh so the next thing would be we want to be able to to um let's call the es res equals client and this is where we're going to be calling the procedure right we want to execute it so it's called execute statement all right so Inside um, the execute statement, there's a few arguments. So let's kind of take a look, take a look at the documentation, right? Execute statement, where is it at? Uh, there it goes, execute statement. So we take a look at it. What are our arguments? Here it goes. So database, we gotta provide a database. Um, in our case, we need to provide a database user as well. What else? The SQL. So in our case, a SQL statement would be called the procedure, right? It would be call, you know, schema dot procedure name. Uh, what else are we, are we specifying here? We're also specifying the cluster identifier. So again, you could have many different Redshift environments spin up like many clusters. So we got to make sure we specify the right cluster. And if you're not, um, I'll walk you through the process. If you're not familiar with how to find that information, some of the other stuff we don't really need. These are, those are really the main thing that we're going to be using in our case. It would be database, DB user, cluster. And so it's these three and then plus SQL, right? So let me, let's go ahead and copy these, right? So I need this, copy this over. 
and then also I said it would be SQL. So let's go ahead and let's let's start off with our cluster, right? So we need to get our cluster identifier. So in, in order to get that, go to Redshift. When you go to your Redshift cluster, here you go. Right, this is my cluster name right here, Redshift Cluster One. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that and uh, pass that in. Okay. So the next thing is database. In my case, I call my database Dev, uh, D E V. That is the name of my database. And then we gotta specify the user. So I, my user is just called admin. So that's my name. Then the last thing is gonna be the procedure. So we're gonna go ahead and call again. Call is is the statement that you use to be able to execute a procedure in Postgres. I'm gonna I'm gonna specify the schema in my case, which is public. Normally when you're dealing with public, you don't have to, but I just do it from best practice. To specify schema. And then the name of my procedure is called update sales date. Um, sales date. It's not updating sales date, it's doing something else, but it's something that we're just testing something with. But this is it. Once we call that, um, that's it, guys. Like, this is literally all we need to do. Uh, we're going to create our client object. Which again, we specif we're, we're specifying the service that we want to execute. Then from there, we're gonna call the execute statement, which is provide the cluster, database name, the user, database user, which is admin, then ultimately your query, right? This could be a select statement, select star from whatever table, view, etc. This could be some sort of insert statement. This could, again, it could be a, a select star from table where some kind of parameter that parameter could come again from your URL of Lambda or, or so on. Right. So you, get, you kind of get creative here, but either way, we're calling the procedure. This is what we're going to be doing uh, to execute our procedure. And this is it guy. There's nothing else for us to do here at all. So let's go ahead. I'm going to deploy this. Okay. So before I run it, one of the things I want to show you as well, let's go to the Redshift database, right? So one thing I want to show you is here's the procedure, right? The update sales uh, date. So it should have been data, but it's date. That's fine. Either way, we're doing something very specific because we're trying to just test the functionality of can we use Lambda or Glue? Uh, we did this in my live stream to be able to call a procedure. Again, that's all we're trying to test here. But ultimately what it's doing is looking for the sales ID and it's gonna update the sales quantity to 99. So if we take a look at this sales ID, which is 33095, I do have a query here, 33095. And if I run this query under for my sales table, we'll see that our quantity right now, quantity sold is one, right? Now, if it works properly, the procedure, if, if we're able to call the procedure properly, what's gonna happen is this quantity sold is gonna change from one to 99. And, and that's good. That tells us that, hey, it actually worked out, you know, properly. Just wanted to kind of show you this. And we're going to come back and query to make sure that it actually did update as intended. Because right now it is showing one, but if it works, it should be 99. So now let's go back to Lambda and uh, let's do a test. Let's test this out. Okay. It ran successfully. Um, let's confirm that it ran. Let's go ahead and look, let's query our database. Remember, this is a one. If it ran successfully, it should be 99. And boom, it's 99. So it called the procedure that we wanted to call. So again, guys, very, very simple when you think about it. Red, use a Redshift data API, which is awesome. Again, you could query, you could do inserts. Uh, all kinds of stuff guys you could do here in our case we wanted to use it to call a procedure which comes in very very handy when you try to automate certain things data loads execute procedure after the fact the list goes on right or just have something that runs every night you know maybe their data being loaded but now you want data to to get reprocessed based on your procedure or apply some kind of business logic from the procedure you could easily have that run every night and you could use Lambda to schedule that pretty much, right? Have it, you know, have it run uh, 
running on schedule and so or so forth. So again, guys, this was a request from a viewer. We actually did some testing related to this on a live stream and uh, we found another solution, but the other solution was kind of more of a workaround with which AWS glue, which wasn't the best workaround, but it worked. This is a better solution. This is, in my opinion, the right solution. So that's why I want to make a video to show the right solution to be able to, in our case, use Lambda to call a Redshift procedure. So again, guys, hopefully this helps. So again, guys, hopefully this helps provide some benefit to y'all. Again, this was a request from a viewer, guys. I'm trying to do what I can to share my knowledge, to solve problems for y'all guys. So again, I've been getting a lot of support, you know, from y'all and I appreciate it, guys. And um, again, hopefully this helps y'all guys, guys out, man. Y'all take care. Peace.